everyone, my name is Bianca Brooks and you are now watching Trading Photos. Today we have a returning guest. Welcome back to the show, Jamar. I'm back. <laughs> yes, you are. So please catch us up. What have you been up to? First, let's start with the hair. Very different. <laughs> yeah, um, so what I've been up to, um, still an entrepreneur, still doing my entrepreneurial thing. Um, that and personal development, I feel like they're tied. Um, well, I feel like they're connected. So the better I become as a person, the better my entrepreneurial pursuits are. So that's number one. That's what I've been up to. And my hair, it's just, I started, I started growing it out during the last time we interviewed. And now it looks like this. So I, I think I've manifested this. Like this is how I wanted it to look when I first started growing my hair. You manifested hair growth. I manifested hair growth, mm -hmm. the style and everything. So, and I did it all myself. I twisted it myself. I locked every single one myself. So it's, it's an art piece. <laughs> my hair is art. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> so do you feel like our hairstyles are not as accepted in the workplace when we decide to grow our hair natural? Good question. Probably pre-pandemic, I think that was the case. But I think the pandemic shook up so many social norms where things like authenticity are more valued than the style of your hair or the clothes you're wearing. I think we've reached um, a different level of conscious during a, a different. I think we've reached a different level of consciousness during the pandemic which allows people like me to go out there and represent myself how I want to represent myself without getting that backlash and judgment that would stop me from prospering in this society. Okay, yeah. interesting. So I, th I just think we've reached a point in our society where mm -hmm. authenticity and integrity matters more than hairstyles or skin color. And, I'm not saying that all of that stuff is over. I'm not saying racism is over, but I think we've reached a new level of consciousness where we are having more authentic connections and um, we're judging less. So that's why I feel more free to wear this art piece I have on my head. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. Does anybody ever try to touch your hair? Um... Uh, Women I date, other than that, no. I like no strangers want to touch my Your hair. Your homeboys never said, hey, let me, let me touch your hair. Heck no. Heck oh. no. They're not touching my hair. None of my homeboys touching my hair. But um, nah, no strangers come up to me touching my hair. Um, I'm sure that would be different if I go to a different country. If I go to like another country, I'm sure they were like, who is this man with this hair? Let me try to touch it. But nah, nobody try to touch my hair. <laughs> Probably be alarming, like, is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so you're you're an entrepreneur now, which is nice. Uh, so that is something, do you think, that really grew a lot during the pandemic? I, I was an entrepreneur pre-pandemic, but the strategy was pretty straightforward, and I was taking a focus strategy. I was worrying about focusing on one pursuit, focus, 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 focus. Now I'm able to tie my personal development, my personal desires with my entrepreneurial pursuits. And I think that wasn't the case. I was mainly in software in 2019. It was just software. That's why I was wearing the khakis, wearing the Patagonia, wearing a New Balance, trying to assimilate you know, and, and I used the word affable. I went and I rewatched our interview and a key word I used there was affable, meaning I wanted to be liked by this group of people in this community. So that changed because now I'm in, I'm still in software, but I'm in different industries of software where I am... Um, I'm doing different things. I'm building rap software. I'm building community software. I'm building mentoring software. So 
I'm just lucky enough to build software that aligns with my desires. So it's still entrepreneurship, but it's more like my desired style of entrepreneurship and not the, not the assimilation type of entrepreneurship that I was doing before. Okay. Now you said something before we started filming. You said that the pandemic gave entrepreneurs the motivation that they need. It gave me the motivation I needed because I was always dreaming of a world that was more authentic. I feel like pre-pandemic, social media made things a little weird where it was easy to go online and fabricate anything that you wanted to do. During the pandemic, you really couldn't do that because everyone was home. So the content that was desired was people being their authentic selves. And that's what I was doing before the pandemic. So once the pandemic happened and I saw people out there start to be their authentic selves, I was like, hold up. There's, there aren't too many people out there more authentic than me. Maybe this is my time. So for people like me who relied on authenticity um, to propel them in that society, it was a great time. It was a great time. So I know it was unfortunate because a lot of people were ill and a lot of people lost their lives. But the bright side of that experience was the world kind of changed. And I think for me, it, they, the world changed for the better. So I was, one of, I was one of those entrepreneurs that was able to propel during the pandemic for sure. All right. So now there have been new developments. You also create music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so a fun fact, I've been rapping since I was five years old. My mother used to like ghostwrite raps for me and my younger sister. So that's always something I've been doing. But again, during the pandemic, it was like, yeah, I want to see some authenticity. Yeah, I didn't know I could rap. Well, here I am rapping. So... I just started doing a bunch of things that I used to do in my teenage years and my young adolescent years. I just was like, now is the time to, you know, share, show the world my talents. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like during the pandemic, I thought now is the time to show everyone my talents. And that's what I've been doing these last couple of years. Nice, yeah. nice. All right, well, tell us about music videos, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I shoot all my music videos on my iPhone. I edit them on my iPhone. Um, yeah, everything is done in-house. And again, the whole idea of the music was just to promote my software products. So everything I'm doing in some weird way is still tied in. And it all falls under this one big umbrella of TBA or Jamar.com. So everything is like connected in some weird way. It may seem like it's a bunch of random things, but it's really not because we designed it to be connected and all-inclusive. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So what kind of music do you make? It depends. It depends on the beat. I've made Afro beats adjacent type music. I've made R&B adjacent type music. Um, rap. That's my, I think rap is my main type of genre. Um, lyrical rap. Um, but... It depends. It depends. I don't I don't want to put myself in a box musically. Um, I'm playing around with some country type of tunes right now. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I'm just I'm just trying to be a a free renaissance person, you know, just doing anything that my heart desires. And I think that's my I think that's my message to the youth specifically is just do whatever you want. Anything you want to do in this world, you can do it. My mother told me that. She empowered me with that message. And as I get older, I realize not a lot of youth are told that when they're young. So if I can be the person that brings that energy and that perspective to them, I'm, I'm here for it. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that something in me just went wow when you said make country music because that's something that's so different. I would mm -hmm. like to see more of us making country music. Yeah, I, I would like to see more of us doing everything. You know, trying it could be country music, it could be 
Well, I don't know because then there's appropriation. I, I wouldn't say go out and go to another culture and try to appropriate their music, which it happens to us. But if you're going to appropriate or if you're going to go into a different genre, go into a different culture, I think do it genuinely. Don't grift. Don't do it because it's like it's common or it's cool. Do it because you gen like you genuinely want to do it. Don't be a scam or anything. Don't just go into someone else's lane because you think you're gonna get clout from it. I don't think that's too pure. So, you know, stay pure. That's all I gotta say. While appropriation is a real thing, you would actually be surprised what we as black people have created. Yep. So what people might think is appropriation, it might just be something that we've just never gotten credit for. Thank you for saying that because you're right. You're right. But I think I was referring to like, don't go to Pakistan and try to like, <laughs> oh, I'm about to make this Pakistani music. Like, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to do it, Learn the culture first, you know, like, I know there's a lot of things that have been stolen from us, but I'm talking about on a global perspective. So you're right. I, yeah, like, you're right. I, I like that narrative as well. Nice. So where can people listen to your music? Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you stream, type in Jamar Youngblood. My face is going to pop up. Press play. Find me on social media, send me a DM, let me know what songs you like, let me know what songs you don't like. I would truly appreciate that type of feedback. Nice, nice. So, when it comes to your music, what exactly inspires you? Because I feel like we've been through so much <laughs> between yeah. now and the pandemic, so I feel like you've gotten a lot of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, the main goal of my music is to try to share a perspective with the younger generation. I'm just trying to combat all of the weird energy that they are hearing today. Murder, sex, drugs, all this toxic stuff that they're hearing in music. I'm just trying to combat it, to be honest. I'm just trying to take some of my ideas that I think can help the youth, and I'm trying to present those ideas in music format because that is where a lot of information is being injected into our youth the most. So my thing is just let me take that strategy of using a lot of drums, a lot of drums that we like. Let me use my authentic voice. Let me go out there, use my coolness, use my swag or whatever, and let me try to package that up in some type of message that our youth can use to help them better their lives. I really like that. That yeah. is amazing. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you're multi-talented. I think you told me you paint as well. Yeah. I mean, again, most of the stuff, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say talent because I think the talent I have is my courage. And my taste, and then I'm just going out there doing it. I don't have any emotional attachment to the results. It's just a, it's just a free, it's a free approach to creativity. So I wouldn't say talent. I think anyone with an opinion, anyone who think they have taste, anyone who's willing to try new things, they're going to end up just like me. I truly believe that. I don't, I don't think I'm different than anyone out there. I think we all have the same capabilities. My talent is just my courage and the fact that I really don't care about too much, especially other people's opinions. It's like, no, I definitely don't care about anybody else's opinion. So I think my talent is my courage. That's good. Mm -hmm. So do you have any celebrities musically you would like to collaborate with? Um, good question. Do I have any? Hmm. I would love to collaborate with the women rappers. I don't think I want to collaborate with any men rap, any male rappers. I mean, of course, I would love to. It would be fun. But I think it would be more fun to collaborate with the women rappers out there that are, you know, being their authentic self, spreading their messages to their people. I think 
for me, that would be the most fun. Because, like, it would be new. I don't want to do everything that every other rapper or musician has done before. I want to, like, you know, I'm, I just love doing new things. I don't like following people. So I like thinking from first principles. I like just trying things that I feel is new because that's what excites me the most. So Kendrick Lamar asked for a collaboration. Mm -hmm. You're not. No, I, no I, again, I have so much respect for Kendrick, so much respect for his cousin Keen, so much respect for their group, the Hillbillies, um, for sure. But it's not like I'm beasting or anything. You're right. It's like I'm more beasting to do a song with um, like who? Ice Spice or somebody or like um, Tierra Wack. She's a rapper from Philly. There's, there's, there's so many other cool women MCs or women artists that I would love to just have fun and make music with. Nice, nice. Yeah. So that's interesting. That yeah. is actually a very different answer. Usually most people, yeah, I want to do it with Kendrick, yeah. J. Cole, maybe Kanye might be yeah. in the mix, but yeah. That's Again, cool. I would love to. If the opportunity presents itself, I'm never going to say no. But if I can manifest it, you know, I think it would be it would be one of the women artists who I think are really talented, really authentic, um, really cool, creative. I think I would have more fun doing that than trying to, I don't know, like, because men have egos. Men have egos. Everyone think like, not every man, but generally speaking, a lot of my experience with men is just a bunch of ego that I don't really like. And it doesn't make me comfortable. But I feel like women bring more compassion. I think in certain times, women can be more authentic and more pure. So, and that's the vibe I like. Compassionate, I love compassionate people. I love authentic people. I love ambitious people. And I think from my experience working with women, that's what I've gotten. Yes, that's mm -hmm. good. Yep. All right. So the last time we spoke, you told me about an app that you were making. Give us an update about that. Yeah. So I was working on a software communication app called TVA. And what we were trying to do was we were trying to create a more authentic and efficient place to communicate with your friends. So the idea started with me being on Ivy League campus at Dartmouth College, I wanted to play tennis. I didn't know how to communicate with a bunch of friends at one time. So the idea was, can I build a piece of software where I can send a message, that message will appear on my friends' phones at the same time, and they can reply to me individually. So I didn't want to put them in a group chat because all of my friends didn't know each other. I didn't want to send a message to every individual person that would have took so much time. So I just said, if I can build a mobile chat experience that's similar to BCC on email, what would that look like? That was the first version of the software. A few years later, well, not a few years later, a little bit after that, Kyrie Irving, who used to play from the Brooklyn Nets, he joined the app because we went to the same high school. He used the app. I saw how valuable it was to, for him, I saw how valuable it was for him to get his message out very fast. That gave me more energy and more confidence to keep building. A couple years later after that, we won a grant with the city of Newark to build a safety feature in our app to protect women and children from street attacks and domestic violence. So... It all tied into this area of getting communication out there fastly, whether it was a woman in danger, whether it was me wanting to reach out to some friends that play tennis, or whether it was Kyrie who wanted to share an update with his um, his direct fans. Um, so that was fun. A couple years after that, we became the first app in the Apple's app store to allow people to earn and spend cryptocurrency. Mm. But that's when things change because this was 2018, 
And most of the community in crypto were libertarians. So they were Trump adjacent. So what I had on my platform was my community, which was a lot of people from the inner city, a lot of women, and a lot of pro-Trumpers. And it was a lot of tension, but the beauty was there were people from both sides getting along. And I realized that the reason that they were getting along is because they were compassionate and they were authentic. So I was having trouble in the program because there were people hacking our stuff. Um, there, I don't know. Like it was just, it was just a weird and intense experience. And me as the community manager, I had to like manage all of that. So it became overwhelming. I shut the app down and I said, "Okay, here's what we're gonna do. This app is gonna be invite only now, and this is." only going to be for members of our community. So I said, TBA is now a collaborative of people who consider themselves compassionate, authentic, and ambitious, and we're going to work on cool projects. So that's where all of the different type of projects come into place. Because now, before it was open to the public, now it's closed off. We're like a little social club who work on our own independent projects now. So I tried to go out big, I tried to scale it to the world, but I realized that I probably just don't get along with everyone in this world. And me trying to get along with everybody was causing more internal harm than it was actually helping me, helping grow my business. So I said, you know what? Let's shut it down. Let's build our own community and let's keep everything in the house. So that's what TBA is now. We're just a collaborative of compassionate, authentic and ambitious people who want to build and support society friendly type of projects or projects that we think are going to help make our world a cooler or better place. It's amazing. I'm yeah. happy to hear that. And yeah. now it is invitation only. So it's yeah. like actually quite elite. Yeah, it's invite. I wouldn't say elite. It's just it's just for us. Like like again, we're not more elite than anyone else. It's just we are a group of people and we like to do X, Y, and Z. If you do not like to do X, Y, and Z, then maybe you are not for us. So I think and again, is it that change was because I need to make myself happy first. Trying to appease the world, like you probably won't appease yourself because you're just trying to be a yes person to everyone as opposed to just working directly with your community and building those strong bonds and doing incredible stuff. So that was like the switch. I stopped trying to appease everyone and I just started trying to appease my direct community. And Life has been so much fun ever since. <laughs> That's good. I'm happy that you're being your authentic self. All right, so you create apps, you sing, you are the visionary behind your projects. Do you mm -hmm. dance? I can dance. I don't dance. Actually, that's a good question because I have um, a music project I'm working on, an album, and there's a song I have called Moving On, and it's like a house adjacent type of record. And there is a dance that I choreograph, I choreograph a dance for that song. And so, yeah, I guess I dance. Yeah, I dance to that list too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I did. Cause I, I just, I created a dance for that song. So yeah, I do right, dance. Good, good, that's good. Well, it's dance just, is good. It's a form of like expression. Exactly. It's just, it just wasn't top of the mind because I did it one time. I didn't do it. If I did it two times, I'd be like, yeah, but I only did it one time. So I guess I can take the label though because I did it, right? <laughs> well, that's good. And I'm happy that you did it. So tell people also you have a documentary coming out soon. Yes. Yes. I do have a documentary. It is called Go DJ, the Jamar Youngblood story. And the overall plot is me teaching myself how to DJ. And I wanted to do a live set. I just, I just said, there's so many people out there making so much money. Steve Aiko, Steve, Steve Aiko, I think that's his name, Calvin Harris, making $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 for a night. 
and just for playing music, playing the right vibes. I love music. I love Korean music. And I thought, why not? Why not teach myself how to DJ to, number one, earn some money, but then spread those vibes, bring, like, spread good vibes through music and use that platform to grow TBA. So again, everything is connected somehow. So that's what the documentary is about. At the top level, it's just about a dude teaching himself how to DJ. But underneath that top storyline, you just have a man that's from the inner city that's just doing anything he wants to do. And that's the message that I want to share with the youth. Do whatever it is you want to do. There's nothing stopping you, especially in today's world when you have YouTube, the perfect starting place to do anything. Go on YouTube, learn, and try. So that's the storyline that I want the youth to take away from this message, is that if Jamar is out there doing whatever he wants to do, then so can I. So that's what the documentary is about. That's good. I'm happy to hear it. So the documentary, where can we watch this documentary? Um, I think... What you can do to follow the storyline, you can follow tba.dao, TBA DAO. That's where we're sharing all of the updates um, about the documentary. But we plan to launch it officially in January. Good. In January of 2024 is when we plan to launch it officially. Well, that is very exciting. Mm -hmm. A documentary, an app, you sing, you're making music videos. I mean, you're just really... I dance. You dance. <laughs> I mean, you're just really getting out there with your talent. That is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't... Like, what else would I be doing? I, I couldn't even imagine something else I'd be doing. And again, the talent is the courage. The talent is the courage to actually go out and try new things, to try what I like learn what I don't like and double down on the things that I enjoy doing. So I think that's the talent and the consistency, me being persistent. Cause you know, I think I still have the same goal. I just want to, I just want to like build products, use that money and then take that money to go help people. That was the same goal in 2019 when you and I met. That was the same goal in 2007 when I built my first product. And it's the same goal now. I just want to, gain some type of capital and use that capital, whether it's social capital or financial capital, and use that capital to help people. And it's, it's as simple as that. So all of these projects, whether it's dance, DJing, art, no matter what it is, the core of it is I just want to help. That's all. Well, that is, in my opinion, some amazing motivation right there that you really want to help people. And that's nice because, you know, a lot of people, they get what they want, but they don't really turn around and give other people a hand up. So I think that's nice that you want to help others. Yeah. I, 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 again, we're on a floor and rock in space, moving really, really fast out there. The one thing I see that there's a lot of people out there struggling, struggling physically, struggling mentally. And I just don't see anything else I would want to do here besides help people. So, yep. All right. Well, that is really nice. Well, Jamar, we're so happy to have you on the show. Do you have any other major updates that you want to share with us? Like you play the piano, you learn to play the violin, you're in a string quartet, you know, anything of the above? Uh, no, but if there is anything, you'll be the first one to find out. <laughs> well, it's good to know that he'll be coming right here on Trading Photos so that he can come and break the news. This is my home. And seriously, hopefully we can continue these things because you and Akinelli, I love the energy that you two have and anything I can do to support, um, won't call away. So I, I won't change my number this time either. So <laughs> I know, right? Hard to get in contact with this guy mid-pandemic. I tried to reach out to him because you know I like to reach out to people who have been on the show. His number changed. I was like, you know, a lot of people had just left the tri-state area. So I just assumed maybe he moved, you know, far away. I was like, Oh, okay, you know, it's a pandemic. People are going through things. There, the, a lot of things were going through our mind during that time. So I was like, okay, no problem. Reaches out to me on Instagram. I don't get back to him until like a week later because I just really don't check my Instagram messages. And I'm like, wait, is that Jamar? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, good call on the Instagram. And I had just taken an Instagram break too. But something told me, wait, let me read 
download this app and see if I miss something. Divine timing. And again, that's just, I became more spiritual and most of my, most of my opportunities are because of divine timing and not me planning anything. Me just having the urge to reach out and then you having the urge to respond and here we are again. So again, I just hope that we can keep continuing um, having these conversations because I think they are important because I think you and I have, like we're aligned as far as like helping people. I think you want to help people too. Like even the questions you ask, even some of the other content that you create, I think it's geared towards helping people change their perspectives. And I appreciate you for that, for sure. Well, thank you. And I appreciate you coming on the show. And it's interesting. That's how we met by, um, I think it was a show we were doing and then I met you. I don't even know how a conversation started, but then that's how we met, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. yeah, it was completely random. Like none of this, none of this here is force. None, none, like none of this at all is force. Everything is just like divine time. So I have no complaints. I'm just full of gratitude to you and Akinelli. I appreciate you too. And the time that you create that, well, the time that you put into creating this type of content. So again, thank you. All right. And thank you for coming on the yep. show. Now I want you to tell the audience yeah. where they can follow you on social media. Yeah, yeah. So on number one, jamar.com. That's my website. Go to jamar.com. I, and I am Jamarshan, J-H-A-M-A-R-T-I-A-N on Instagram. All right. Wonderful. Yep. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone. And thank you so much for watching Trading Photos. Make sure that you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel.